Ladies and gentlemen, Sir Richard Branson. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you so much. So, what are you going to do next? <laughs> the, um, oh, I don't know. Every minute of life is um, extraordinary. Um, and, um, uh, and I don't know what's going to happen next. I'm off to India tonight to launch a mobile phone company there. But um, lots of wonderful, wonderful challenges, lots of wonderful people. And uh, had the most incredible 24 hours here in Saudi yeah. Arabia. I was going to say, if I may, uh, I had the, uh, the honor of being with you and Sami and Ahwa last night, you and Joan as well, um, at the, the party. Uh, and you put the headgear on and you participated and listened to the music and the musicians came and spoke to you afterwards. But what was your first impression of Saudi Arabia? There you were, helter-skelter, everything happening to you, but you must have formed an impression. Well, I mean, I think it's... Um it's a much more positive impression, perhaps, than the world has given Saudi Arabia the last um, five years. Um, and uh, enormous, enormous warmth from the people. Um, and, uh, and I think a, you know, a, a real urgency to try to want to, to show the rest of the world that Saudi Arabia uh, um, is not the sort of very conservative country that perhaps the, the impression is around the rest of the world. And, um, and I think I've met a lot of people who, you know, perhaps particularly the women who actually want, want to see a movement. They want to see uh, Saudi Arabia moving forward and they want to see a bit of change. Um, and uh, so, uh, anyway, it's been a delightful 24 hours. All right. I mentioned in my introduction to you the, the UN Citizenship of the World Award, which was correspondence and... Um, you were given it uh, by the Secretary General um, and you are, as that video made clear and anybody who's read anything about you knows that you are very successful you're very wealthy you're very well known but also you're very influential so what in your view, Richard made you a leader and what do you see as that leadership role in the world? Because it isn't just business. We saw you there with Al Gore. We saw you in Africa. We know you work with Nelson Mandela. What made you what you are? And what do you see as your role? Well, I think, I think the best leaders are, are people who are good uh, at motivating people and dealing with people. Um, the best leaders are people who uh, look for the best in people. Um, people who are good at praising people. Um, you know, uh, and... Um, and I, I fortunately, you know, ever since I was a young, young man, I, I've loved, I love people. So, um, so it, it hasn't been difficult for me, I think, to be a, to be a good leader. Um, and, uh, and I think that if you're, if you're a good leader, um, you know, people will do anything for you if they, if they really believe that what you believe in you and if, if they believe in what you're trying to do. Um, I, th I think the second important thing about being a good leader is to make sure that um, what you're doing is worthwhile. Yeah. Um, so there's no point, I think, in just thinking, you know, I want to set out to make a lot of money. I think what, what you want, what you, mu you must feel passionate about what you want to do. Um, you must feel you really want to change, uh, change the world for the better as a result of the time um, you're spending doing it. Um, and that applies as much to business as it does to tackling um, social issues. So, uh, so if you're going to create a business, you know, there's no point in spending time creating a business uh, unless you're going to be really proud of the business you've created, uh, that it's making a massive difference to people's lives, that all, all the staff who work for you, you know, 100% believe in what you're, what you're doing, that 100% believe in what they're doing. Um, and when they go home at night, they can, they can you know, passionately say, I'm proud to work for that company. You know, we've, we've made a real difference to other people's lives. The byproduct of making a difference to people's lives is hopefully you'll be able to pay the bills and you'll be able to make some money. Um, but this, you're not going to get satisfaction from the amount of money you've got in your bank account. You're going to get satisfaction from people saying to you, 
you know, it's just wonderful what you've managed to achieve with this company or that company or the other company. So I think the first, you know, in a sense, the first half of someone's life is, you know, building a brand or building, building a company that, uh, that everybody can be proud of. Um, <coughs> the byproduct can be that great wealth yeah. comes to you. Um, and with that wealth, um, I think, comes enormous responsibility. But when um, you use the, the word brand, and, and, and brand is something that, that you are recognized as being an expert in, not only in, in setting up businesses that may do very well or do reasonably well, or even occasionally not do as well as you'd hoped for, but the idea of brand, and I, I've no idea how this translates, but I've spoken to many Saudi people who they certainly know what brand is all about. And the classic definition of brand isn't simply something that you stamp on a product. It is something that speaks to values and speaks to beliefs. Can you encapsulate what Virgin, whether it's on an aeroplane, on a train, or on a mobile telephone, is supposed to say to people? Well, as a side, amusing side thing, um, the Telegraph did an examination of my surname. And uh, they went back a few hundred centuries, and they found that my great, 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 whatever, uh, they used to, we used to brand cattle. <laughs> and I was so, son of brand was somebody that used to brand the back of cattle, uh, brand son. Anyway, um, they, <laughs> but I think that, um, you know, what, you know the, the, what we've tried to do is to, you know, the, the brand is only as good as your products. And... You know that we, 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 our brand that we like to think stands for, you know, good quality. Um, I mean, if you can be the best quality in in any area, you will never go bankrupt. I mean, um, good value for money. Um, if you, if you've got good quality, generally speaking, a lot of people will come and demand your product. So um, you should be able to offer good value for money as well. Um, we we try to do everything with a bit of fun and and enjoy what we're doing and make sure that you know our staff. Are, are enjoying what they're doing as well and um, and so you know having fun doing what we're doing is, is very important sure. as well so if you stitch those two together my next question then is very much to what this economic forum is about as you can see it's everywhere the brand if you will of this forum is value creation through alliances and partnerships and, you, and you've talked about those alliances and partnerships with your staff with your team the people that you work with and your role in that as the leader and the definer of the brand. So do you have, uh, as it were, an agenda that you would like business people particularly to work toward when they look at the world out there, not simply as a, a theatre in which you can make money, but a world which can be improved and should be improved by men and women of wealth and influence? Yes, I think that um, business leaders have an enormous responsibility um, and um, the you know I, I am no more successful uh, than you or than an, a successful nurse or a successful doctor um, or a successful you know uh, ca driver of, of taxis I mean I'm, you know I am successful in my profession uh, an enormous wealth comes with being, being a successful business leader um, and therefore gigantic responsibility comes with that as well and um, we cannot rely on politicians I think to sort out the problems of the world they're not necessarily trained to sort out the problems of the world um, whereas a business leader you know that you've got you've got business leaders who often used to be entrepreneurs and therefore they can see problems differently than perhaps um, you know politicians and they've obviously got um, wealth as well so um, so a good business leader, I think, once they've actually secured their company uh, and they know that it's, it's safe and, and, and they're, no, they're no longer struggling to survive, uh, then they should turn their attention to um, ad addressing some of the global problems. Um, they can either do it by reinvesting their money in businesses, which will make a difference, and maybe in, in continents where, they, de where, where they, they desperately need people to invest money in, um, in, creating, in creating new jobs. Um, or they can use their, uh, their skills in actually um, uh, in investing in social areas, um, not just giving the money, in my opinion, but actually investing in social areas where 
um, you know, where they, where, they, where they can use their entrepreneurial skills to make a really radical difference in the world. How do you, and you have a lot of experience of this uh, in the United Kingdom, and you've negotiated with governments around the world, I mean, not least when you're setting up airlines, because governments clearly have a crucial and, and, and not unreasonable safety interest in such matters and what have you. But you've had a lot of experience of negotiating with the British government. Sometimes it's gone very well indeed, but you had a recent stumble uh, over a, a particular issue, which we, we, we may talk about in a minute. But what you've just said, I think, is of great significance to this audience, which is not only Saudi Arabian, it, it, it's broader than that. And that is the relationship between the business class, as it were, entrepreneurs, business industrialists, and the rest of it, and government, and the way in which you can have a developing partnership where each knows what his or her role is. I mean, is there a Branson theory on that, or does it have to be pragmatic? Does it have to be dependent upon where you are and what the challenge is? I just think it's a very important ratio question, almost. Well, I, th I mean, I think it's very important that the government uh, and business uh, keep their distance, um, because government are often the judge and jury, um, and they're going to have to, you know, to make judge and jury decisions over different business people. I think it's extremely important that that business leaders do not get tempted to bribe government leaders, because I think once you start once you once you start having a situation where politicians become susceptible to bribes. Uh, it ricochets down. You then, if, if, if the politicians are being bribed, then the customs officers think that they can get involved in that. Then the police force think they can get involved in that, uh, and the, a society starts to rot. And, and innocent people get a, you know, arrested because they can't afford to pay bribes. So, um, and I think the people actually offering the bribes are as actually guilty as the people receiving the bribes. So, I think that on a worldwide basis, I think it's up to the. the on, 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 a, on a worldwide basis, I think it's up to the business community together to actually you know, get together and say, look, you know, we, we know that you're, you're, you're bribing people. You shouldn't. N none of us must do that. And nobody must bri break ranks on that. And, and, uh, and nobody must get an unfair advantage over anybody else on that point. Um, so, um, but, but otherwise, I think that um, you know, there, there are, what, what business people must not do is think that government can deal with all the social problems of the world. Um, uh, there are a lot of social problems in the world that, the, that actually business people are equipped to deal with much better than government, and they should get on and do it. Well, we had, we had the enormous honour of having Mohammed Yunus from the Grameen Bank speaking to us earlier, and, and got a standing ovation like you did when I just announced that you were going to be here a little while ago. Um, and, and that was precisely a point that he made, that very often it is imaginative uh, business partnerships that, that can go and resolve such problems. I want to talk a little bit more about business partnerships as well, if I may. Um, because a lot of 